Hello everyone, Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. Apologize for being a minute or two late here. Um, ran into internet issues again. I'm right by my modem, so it shouldn't be a distance thing. But I had to reset that modem, which always takes a few more minutes to um, get caught up with the system as we're going through here. So I'm going to wait just a few minutes, make sure, a minute or two here, just to make sure that I'm going live in the right space and actually in the right direction, um, which it looks like I am. Let me know if you're out there watching. It looks like I've got a couple people. Just make a comment or something. And of course, right now I'm on my phone, so I can't see all the comments, but that's okay. I should be coming up on my iPad here in just a second. These lives, you just never quite know what's going to happen um, as you're going until you're actually set up and going live. You just don't know what's going to hit you. Okay, so welcome, welcome, everybody. It is Monday, March 8th, and at least here in Minnesota, we are having absolutely awesome spring weather. Our snow is almost gone, and um, for that, I'm happy that that is happening. Yeah, it looks like we've got a few people out here. Hey, April, Ann, Terry. Hey, Susan. Glad you could join us tonight. Hey, we're going to do a slimline card tonight. I've seen lots of people working on these, and I've never um, taken time to put one together. So I've got just a couple examples for you. Um, this first one is using the Butterfly Brilliance set that we talked about last week with the card that I made. And um, I turned this one into an Easter blessings with these butterflies. The butterflies kind of remind me of spring and Easter and that type of thing. So there's a quick one there, and then true to form, I'm trying to make a masculine card as well, and I've had a string of masculine birthdays where I've needed masculine cards and haven't had them, so I put one together um, using some of the copper and foil paper in the, and of course now I'm not remembering the name of it, world of good specialty paper, um, and just made it quick and simple. These cards do come in weighing at exactly one ounce, so I'm not adding a lot of bling or extra to them. Um, and unlike our regular cards, they just slide right into a number 10 envelope and can go. Just double check your postage before you mail them because I'd hate for it to come back to you after you took time to make your card. All right, what I am going to work with tonight is the Inspiring Iris set. It's from the annual catalog. And again, because of this wonderful weather that we're having, I have decided to um, embrace spring and hope that we don't get any more snow. And so um, iris are one of my favorite flowers. And I'm going to just jump right in and get going on this card. So the first thing that you need is a, I'm going to make sure I give my measurements to you correctly here, a 9 by 7 piece of cardstock. And you're going to score it at 3 and a half inches. You'll also need... A piece of cardstock that's eight and three quarters by three and a quarter and then you can either use whisper white or very vanilla or if your cardstock is light enough just a second piece again at eight and three quarters for three and a quarter this will go on the inside of our card and then you will also need three oops you know what I didn't cut yet Well, darn it, I forgot to cut my designer series paper. Isn't that the way it goes? Here I thought I was so far ahead and even took time to clean up the mess around me just a little bit. I guess that backfired on me. All right, just one second here. The fun of doing a live video, huh? Okay. And this piece of your designer series paper is actually cut at three by eight and a half inches. Oh, 
Okay, now I'm ready to go. So then you're going to need a piece of designer paper at, like I said, three by eight and a half inches. You also need three squares of cardstock that's cut at two and a quarter by two and a quarter, and then three squares of basic white cardstock that is cut at two by two. So we're going to get started first with our stamping because I'm actually going to bring in the Stamparatus to help with this iris set. Um, it is a two-step stamp and we'll be doing it for both the inside of the flower as well as the leaves. Um, fortunately, this is again another one of those sets that it doesn't have to be lined up quite perfect to make it work, which are my favorite kind of stamps. And so I've got my Stamparatus back out and I have my stamps all lined up so that my images will work just like this one here. And so what I've done is I've just put a little bit of tape in the center of my square where I've lined my stamps up so that my paper will stick when I'm moving my plates back and forth on here. But I also know that this location is going to cause all of my stamps to line up right. And so I'm going to start with my Memento Tuxedo Black ink and ink up the outline of the iris and the leaves. Sorry if I'm shaking the camera a little bit there. And I'm just going to push that image down onto my paper. And because I am flipping my plates around a little bit, I want to make sure that I'm cleaning my stamps off real quick here um, with my chamois just so that I'm not getting ink on other stuff. And then I'm going to take my gorgeous grape ink spot. Again, you can use your regular stamp pads as well with the Stamparatus. I just choose um, to use the slightly smaller ink spots because it uh, allows me to ink up my images without making a huge mess. And most of my ink spots come from my paper pumpkins. I just save them and um, add them to my collection so that I have them specifically for my Stamparatus. However, we do sell some select ink, st ink spots in the catalog as well if you don't have a paper pumpkin subscription. And you can get blank ones or empty ones that you can ink up yourself too. So I'm just gonna ink up my flowers here and bring them down. And this is why I love the Stamparatus so much because it, it gets my ink right where I need it to go. And again, especially with that purple ink, I'm notorious for dragging my hands through my projects and getting them all dirty. And then I have the green or the, the image I'm going to use for the leaves on the back side of my plate here so I'm just going to flip it around real quick and again I happen to have a garden green ink spot your full pad will work too I just get better control with my ink spots so I will ink that oops ink that up and press it down And there we go. So now we've got our two images done for the front of the card and I just need to stamp a greeting. So let me wipe that up. And the one thing you need to be careful of with your Stamparatus is you can't um, close two plates down on top of each other. It won't work. So just always pull one plate out before you put it away. Okay, well, let's start with the, oh, one more stamped image. Forgot my greeting. I am using the Sending Hugs, Prayers, and Lots of Love. I figure this greeting is good if you've got a friend who's just needs a little hug or whatever from you. Or if um, you have somebody that's it lost somebody in their family and or a friend and, and needs... A condolence card you've got that taken care of too with this greeting as well so I'm going to get my piercing mat out 
to stamp on since I'm using one of the photopolymer stamps. These mats are not in the annual catalog, but they are still available. Um, if you're not able to find it, just let me know and I can get you the item number. So again, I'm just going to ink up my image and I am going to be adding a bow to this card. So I'm going to put my image down towards the bottom of my square so that I have room for my bow on the top there. And now we can start assembling. So I'm going to take all of my pieces and get going. The first thing I'll do is take my nine by seven piece of paper that I've scored at three and a half. And I'll use my bone folder to get a good burnished edge to have a nice sharp crease there. And then I will take this next layer of paper and use my seal to adhere this to the inside of my card. And I'm going to set that aside and bring in my designer paper. I hate to cover up those beautiful hydrangeas, but I really just want this plain color here. Adhere this to this layer and then I'm going to assemble this whole piece before I add it to the front of my card. So the next thing I'm going to do is take these three pieces of my gorgeous great paper and I'm just going to attach my pieces to these. Oh Terry, you finally got space to work on your table. You know, I have my Stamparatus in the carrying case, which is great when I'm transporting, but I don't always get it out, so I've actually started leaving mine out um, where I can grab it easily, and then I find that I'm using it a lot more. So that's one tool I don't put away is the Stamparatus, because it just saves me so much time, especially if I'm making multiples of a card. Okay, and then of course, I'm going to grab my Wink of Stella, and I have a 50-50 shot of getting the newer one. I think it's this one. Yep. Because I want to add just a little bit of sparkle. No, it isn't that one. I want to add just a little bit of sparkle. To my iris because again I'm not going to add any bling I don't want to add a whole lot more weight to the card but I do want a little sparkle to my card did anybody get to get outside and enjoy this good weather today at home from work and took Loki for a walk with John and it was so nice to have the roads dry. We didn't have to come in and give the dog a bath because he got all wet from our walk. All right, then we're going to adhere these three pieces and I think I'm gonna arrange these like this so that my greeting is in the center. So I actually find it's easier to center that first piece and then I can balance out the two on the side. So that is the order that I'm going to put these on. Um, when I made that masculine version of the card, um, it was so easy because the background paper was the grid paper. So I could pretty much line it up on there and, and have it spaced and lined up very neatly not going to have the same luck with this paper. So when I do put these down, I'm not going to adhere them super tight. So if I need to tweak it just a little bit, I'll be able to do that. 
I know a lot of people like to use the Tombow liquid glue when they're putting things like this on. Um, I'm a messy gluer, and so I tend not to use a lot of that for things like this. Um, but that's an option that you have as well, and that does give you the ability to move things a little bit more. But actually, I think that's pretty good. So, I will adhere them now. And then, it sounds like the dog just came downstairs, so he may be coming over here if you hear tags tingling in the background. Angel was helping me when I was setting up, but she apparently decided not to stay in the film. Yep, there we go. Hi, Loki. He's been out playing in the snow and he caught one of his dew claws, I suspect, in the ice and broke it off. So he's been working on the foot. It's not quite detached yet. Poor guy. So he's chewing on it. We'll give it a day or two and then usually we can take care of it. But he doesn't like us going near it until a couple days have passed. So I'm just going to attach that little bow on the front. And we have our quick little slimline card. So there you go. Ooh, four miles. Nice, Susan. Good job. Um, Yeah, but Terry, your dog's a little smaller than my dog. We had to lift him up into the wash tub in the laundry room in order to get him into the tub. He hates the bath part, but loves the drying off part. So at least we got that done and he needed a bath anyhow, I guess. So anyhow, there you go. Slimline cards. Again, like the other cards that I'm trying to show you, very easy to make them um, look very different just based on the paper and things that you use. I think this Easter Blessings could go um, very nicely to any of your friends. Again, a great version of a masculine card. Um, I just love this paper, and the, the copper embossing powder really pulls in nicely, either with the gold or not. Um, the gold that's in the foil or the copper that's in the foil paper in this set. And again, blends very nicely with the cinnamon cider cardstocks and inks as well. You know, here's one. This is using the paper from the, um, help me, help me. The, uh, it's in the January to June catalog. It is the uh, well, well suited designer series paper, which this was actually based off of a stamping off up employee. Um, he brought in some shirts from his closet and they designed this paper based on his shirts. Kind of a fun story. And then here we go with the purple version of this. Um, nice and springy. Let's hope it's here to stay. I really, really appreciate you taking time to watch my video. Um, I would love to see if you create this card. Love to see what you make. Go ahead and post it in the comments down below. Um, we can all learn and get ideas from each other when we do that. And I will see you next Monday for the next Make It Monday. I plan to show you how to make an envelope too that will fit this card. That'll be on my Thursday tip video. That way if you don't want to use one of these plain ugly boring number 10 envelopes you'll be able to make your own out of card stock as well. So watch for that on Tuesday or Thursday. Thursday this week. Sorry about that. Thanks everyone. Have a great evening and we will see you next week for Make It Monday. Bye bye.